Okay, so if you're looking for something new to watch online, you may want to check out Spiral. We talked about this before, Kate. We did. Yeah, a new drama that ponders the existence of past lives in a series full of romance and mystery and intrigue. It stars an ensemble cast of performers from popular TV series such as Riverdale, The Next Step, and Make It Pop. Joining us now are two of the cast, Alexandra Beaton. Hello. And Brennan Klost is here. Hi, Brennan. Hi. Now, you're both well known from your worldwide hit show, The Next Step. And also joining us is Spiral executive producer and head writer, Karen McClellan. Hello. Thank you for having me. Welcome to what she said. Now, Karen, tell us how this project came to be. Uh, It was about eight years ago that my friend Andrew Williamson, my fellow executive producer and co-creator on the show, Uh, We were sitting talking about ideas that excited us and we discovered we had a a mutual interest in past lives and dreams and dreams that come true and talked about this notion of friends who have known each other literally forever through lifetimes and that um, developed into Spiral, the show that we have today. Now, we know you've directed episodes of The Next Step. How did you come to cast this this pair, this sort of very connected pair in Spiral? Uh, it was, you know, it was kind of a serendipitous moment. I was yeah. going through the scripts. Um, we had a number of scripts through development, and I was reading this one scene between Sophie and Clark. And as I was reading it, I thought instantly of Alex and Brennan. And I remember having lunch with both of them and saying, do you guys think you would be interested in playing these two characters? Um I was blown by their work on The Next Step. They're phenomenally talented, and they have such a great chemistry with each other that I thought they would be perfect for these roles. Okay, but Alex plays Emma, right? Not Sophie. Mm. So it's 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 confusing for me because my daughters are Alex and Sophie. And then we've got (laughs) (laughs) other characters on the show. So I get all confused with the names. So Alex, tell us a little bit about the storyline and how karma comes into play. Karma is a big thing in Spiral, just as it is in our everyday lives, if you believe in that kind of thing. Um, But karma kind of controls these characters, whether they know it or not. I mean, the thing about Spiral that is so interesting is that everybody in the story knows more than you think they do. And that slowly gets revealed to the viewer as you watch. So the first episode is amazing, but I can promise you that it just gets more and more interesting as the episodes go on. So, Brandon, how did you work the transitions through time and character traits? We talked a lot as a cast um, because the dialects would have been a little bit different back then. And Mm -hmm. we analyzed that and we decided that that wasn't necessarily what was important, but rather the emotion and the characters' interconnectedness, their Mm -hmm. relationships. And we really tried to focus on that. And something to add off of Alex, the idea of karma and why that was important in the past life The thing with Emma and Clark is that they have this sort of star-crossed lover connection where there's always something holding them away from each other. And so that was really the focus in the flashback sequences was what is it that keeps them apart. Mm -hmm. So, Karen, this was shot in Vancouver. Victoria. Victoria, okay. Mm -hmm. And TELUS made a big commitment to the project. They did. Um, They must have seen something that they really liked. I think so. I mean, I think... What sets Spiral apart from anything else that you can see online or on TV right now is that it's um, it's a story that hits a particular age group, university, um, and it, it has this sort of soapy appeal, but it has this supernatural, surreal quality to it, and there's a mystery and romance, and I, I think they thought that that would be a good way to reach out and find their audience, and... Um, it's something that I haven't seen around, like on, on social media or mm-hmm. on TV right now. So, Going back to you two, can I ask you, in your career, every role, I think, as an actor, you want to expand? You want to, what did you each see in this role? With Emma, I saw the opportunity for authenticity, just because she was written so well and she's such a full character, that being able to explore not only her current life, but a past life and potentially more and more past lives just 
gave me an opportunity as an actor to really connect to her in a ton of different ways. I mean, we have similarities, but we're also very different. So just like finding those moments within the scenes that really connected me to her, I think that's what every actor is looking for, just like the experience to grow as an actor, but through your character as a person. And Emma gave me that opportunity. I and think, you? Yeah, I think what connected me so strongly with Clark is that he was written to be the romantic lead of the show, but had an LGBT storyline, which I think isn't seen in a lot of dramas or TV series or even movies. That's always the gay best friend. Mm. And what I really loved about him was that he was able to, perhaps before we pick up in episode one, go through this sort of confusing timeline of maybe figuring out his sexuality and then meet someone who throws that all into question. And it's sort of that confusion all over again where he's, you know, going back through figuring out this deep-seated romantic connection, spiritual connection with a woman when it's expected and he believes in himself that maybe he's gay. And so it, it was that. It was that mm -hmm. complex character. Yeah. And he was a, a, full, a full person rather than just this archetype of the gay best friend. And do you find that you, – you mentioned you find that's rare. It's unusual. You yeah. think it would be – it wouldn't be these days. I think there's a lot more parts being written for that sort of character now. And Spiral's kind of at the brink of that, which excites me because I think that's sort of up and coming. Karen, what's your reaction to that? Andrew and I had many long discussions about what we wanted to tell, the kind of stories that we wanted to tell. And, and I think the whole fluidity uh, with sexuality is just very current and it's, it's – um, it's fresh, and it, I, I haven't seen it done before, and it just feels natural to me. It's part of the story that I want to tell, which is about people being people and love transcending gender and sexuality. Mm -hmm. And that's they, they just did such a fantastic job bringing that to life. Well, and speaking of people being people, we often hear about bitter competition between actors, but you two, Brennan and Alex, are incredibly supportive of each other. You've been working on The Next Step, now Spiral, and now I understand you have plans to head to Los Angeles to test the waters for pilot season. A little nerve-wracking for your mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, but did, did you guys bond from the start when you saw each other? I would say season five of the next step is where we really hit it off and Brennan and I we had an opportunity to grow in the next step and then when we reached the people we are now those people really just seemed to click as for competitiveness I think that's a petty thing I mean yes maybe when you're younger and you haven't grown up and jealousy can play a factor maybe then competitive kicks in but you know we're older more mature hopefully a little bit wiser yeah so we, we sort of connected after university mm -hmm. was when season five of The Next Step filmed and Alex and I had both just graduated. And mm -hmm. I think when we started The Next Step, we had just finished high school. We didn't really know who we were. And so mm -hmm. as she said, when we kind of became people, when we came <laughs> into ourselves is when we really connected and hit it off. OK, so episode one of season one is is unlocked. It's online. Where can people watch it? What's the site? Oh, it's at spiralbackwards.com. Um, and if you're listening and you're in BC, you can also access it through TELUS. Hmm. Okay, and Brennan, um, what's the reaction been on social media? Are it's, you going viral yet? It's <laughs> been incredibly positive. Yeah, we've had tons of comments on our Instagram posts, tweets, uh, fandoms, fandoms created, mm -hmm. um, you know, edits that they've created from screenshots of the show. They came up with a whole hashtag spiral cult, which I loved. So <laughs> <laughs> it's been really positive. Yeah. Well, I just have one question. Spiral backwards. What about spiral future? When's the next season coming out? Well, we're currently looking for funding and hoping to get that secured ASAP because I have lots of plans for a <laughs> season. This is the beginning of the story. Oh, we it definitely so. is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's fabulous. Yeah. Well, congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Oh, thank thank you. you so much for joining us here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you so much. This See you is at home, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> What's for dinner? <laughs> this is what she said. Stay with us.